The best advice that I can give to any um, hospital taking on high flow therapy is have a good guideline. Don't leave your staff stranded at two o'clock in the morning to think about how to set it up, what flow rates to start with. Really make it clear and easy for them to use. The best thing is basically the effect that it has on the patients. I think ultimately that's why we're all here in the hospital because we just want our patients to have a good outcome. High flow is a respiratory system that delivers heated and humidified air blended with oxygen at the rate that meets the inspiratory demand of the patient. The patient gets uh, inspiratory aid, so basically feels that during the inspiratory phase there's air flushed into the lungs. Providing that additional flow, um, it does take the load off and we know that they're going to be having that positive pressure to help recruit collapsed alveoli, which enables better gas exchange, so we have a lot less oxygen requirement in those babies. High flow use very early in the disease process prevents the progression of the disease, which means that these children don't get sicker, don't need ICU admission, and we can keep them within the paediatric ward and may reduce the length of stay within the hospital. It is also important that the hospital has an integrated approach uh, in the use of high flow, uh, that the high flow use is protocolised and uh, similar used from ED to uh, the ward as well in ICU. In the emergency department, it made such an enormous difference to be able to recruit those children straight onto the high flow and send those children to the ward rather than to intensive care. We've realised it's not just a modality for those very sick patients. Once the staff became very confident with the therapy and um, what to look for, how to monitor it, when to escalate, how to wean it, we started wanting to do it on different types of diseases. There's a, an array of respiratory illnesses that we believe high flow can support as well. In infants less than 12 months, we use two litres per kilogram per minute, particularly in the group of infants with bronchiolitis. This flow rate has been demonstrated to be safe, effective, and well documented in the uh, published literature. For older children, uh, we use a table of flow rates adapted to the weight of children. They are based on physiology data that has been shown to be effective uh, without any complications. And there are a group of patients who don't respond to high flow and go on to need more therapy, but the vast majority of them will. Uh, and that's there in front of your eyes. You can see it and they've responded and you see that, that benefit. You measure the heart rate, you measure the respiratory rate, and you would expect within the first one or two hours that the heart and the respiratory rate are decreasing as a response to the treatment. For weaning, we don't wean flows. We only reduce the oxygen fraction down to 21%. Once that has been achieved, uh, we stop the high flow afterwards. Once the patient is actually in room air, we stop the high flow and take them off and observe them for another four hours and they're ready to be discharged. Feeding on high flow is uh, still a topic uh, that leads to lots of discussion and uh, needs further research. If a child is very sick and in high respiratory failure, uh, we use nasogastric feeding. If a baby improves, we let the baby oral feed or even breastfeed whilst we're reducing the flows uh, to two litres and then uh, ramp up the high flow afterwards again. We've got a standardised system. So we have the AIRVO, which is basically like an integrated flow machine. We have one set up at each bed space. Applying the OptiFlow nasal prongs is a really simple process. Um, they're nice and soft and they have um, a detachable wiggle pad. We can position them comfortably on the patients and they fit really nicely. We found our experienced nurses are so comfortable initiating high flow, maintaining the patient and then weaning high flow. It's a very seamless process, it's very nurse driven and nurse led and we know that when nurses drive these processes it's better for patients. It's been a fantastic change so I, I would suggest to any other hospitals to embrace it. Provide really detailed education, um, support your nursing staff and they will feel empowered to care for babies really well.